Hidden in the tree hollows and remnant bush around our suburbs and gardens are a variety of nocturnal birds that you might not even know are there. I'm in the forest near Margaret River in the southwest of WA with Dr Boyd Wikes, who is a retired ornithologist and environmental manager and is an active conservationist with a keen eye for nocturnal birds. What species of owl are we likely to find in these parts? This reserve here in Witchcliffe has owl at night jars, boo-books and tawny frogmouths. But what's special here tonight is that masked owls have been seen here. I find it magnificent to be out here. And the more I've been out here, the more I've found I've been surprised by the amount of nocturnal bird life and the variety of bird life we have around our townships in our gardens. You might be wondering what looking for owls around Margaret River has to do with gardening. Well, what we do around our homes and gardens can have a massive impact on the survival of these majestic creatures. One of the favourite food of owls and other birds of prey are rats and mice. And sometimes their meal carries a deadly secret, poison from the rodent baits that have been consumed by their prey. The story with the rat baits was that we were discovering about the masked owls and at the same time Mike Law at Edith Cowan University was doing a study on boobooks and finding rodenticides in boobooks all around urban populations and we realised they'd be a, a threat to our beloved masked owls and a whole lot of our other wildlife. So we started getting some uh, corpses, uh, ones that had been hit by a car or had been found and getting the livers analysed. And the liver analysis is showing that uh, they're getting multiple poisons in their livers and uh, some of them at levels that really contributed to their death. Tell me about your research into what makes up an owl's diet. Well, with the mast owl, first we had to find out where they lived, where their nests were, where they roosted. That took us a couple of years, but the treasure you get when you find a roost is the pellets that they regurgitate. Um, that's got the bones and the fur of what they've eaten in. So they, they eat during the night, sit at their roost in the day, and just as they start the next evening's work, they regurgitate this pellet. It's, um, it's a nice little black pellet that we pull apart. I've got the remnants of the food from one night of this adult um, down on the river, uh, near Margaret River, and um, if it's got a skull, that, that's great. That's uh, going to make it easiest for the identification. And uh, there's some jaws. Let's check the dentition here, but I'd say this is a ratus ratus. This is the introduced rat, and it's probably been uh, collected around somewhere like my own chook pen at night. What proportion of an owl's diet is made up from rats and mice? The amount of uh, rats in the diet varies between the, uh, the birds and their locations, but uh, well over 50% are rodents. At Eagles Heritage Raptor Wildlife Centre, where sick and injured birds of prey are cared for, long-serving curator Phil Payne is all about education. Now, a new and emerging problem is rat bait. Now, we might put rat bait out around the house to kill off all the rats and mice. Not only do we kill all the rats and mice, but we kill every other native animal that feeds upon those dead rats and mice. Phil knows all too well the impacts of rodenticide poisons on birds of prey. What impact are you seeing on birds being brought to your centre, resulting from the use of rat baits? No, we get a number of birds handed in, but most of them are so far gone we can't do anything for them. It's a terrible form of poison because actually it's a slow, lingering death. Are you seeing a growing awareness of the impact of some of the baits? Absolutely. Now, particularly since Boyd here has been doing all this fantastic work because now I see it everywhere and everybody's talking about it because it really is a big thing. I mean, people use, most people use some form of bait and depending on where they put it and how they put it out, it can kill not only the intended rats and mice but Anything that else that eats those dead rats and mice, they're gone as well. Along with other passionate local people, Boyd launched the Owl-Friendly Margaret River campaign, 
with the masked owl as their ambassador. It started off with this uh, group of us getting onto the masked owls as this wonderful little known owl that was in our midst. We just didn't realise it. And then finding out about their identicide program, a group of us got together and said, what can we do about it? We could have a campaign and we just said one night, let's do it. The aim of the campaign is to educate the public about the impacts of using poisons to deal with nuisance rodents and offer alternative solutions that will keep native wildlife safe. I'm fully sympathetic. I've experienced the problem with rats myself. We have a problem with them in our roof because our house was not designed to keep rats out. If you can stop the entry into, uh, into the house, uh, that's obviously a good idea. Around the garden, the um, compost heaps, the, uh, where the, you've got chooks and you've got food out for them, you're going to be attracting them. Uh, try and uh, control that in uh, the hygiene, as we call it, and the places they live. They'll, they'll nest in uh, under paving, they'll nest in any materials. You've got a pile of rubbish. I prefer traps to poison, why wouldn't you? And the alive trap is a, is a good uh, way to do it. The lethal traps can be very handy if you're not going to kill something that uh, you don't intend. And you can have the various old fashioned traps that will flip down and kill the animal. If you are desperate, and you are going to use a poison and you can put it somewhere where you feel other animals aren't going to get it, then use a first generation anticoagulant. Use the one with warfarin or kumatetral in it and uh, as a secondary poison, other animals will cope with that. The Owl Friendly Margaret River campaign was started by just a small group of concerned local residents, but it's already making an impact. In fact, the Shire of Augusta Margaret River has signed on and has adopted wildlife friendly rodent management practices across all of its operations and local businesses are getting behind it too. So by making small changes in our own gardens, we can all help the local populations of creatures that feed on rodents. Marsupials, raptors, reptiles and of course owls. Shh.